in our uh, last session, uh, that, that was a bit of a departure from what I've been doing for a number of weeks. Uh, and it was, a, it was by uh, a request from someone that we do something with skies. And so this was the demonstration that I did, and many of you would have been involved with this uh, for the last session. The reason I show you that is to say that this session we're doing now on flowers is also a departure. In fact, for me, it's probably a greater departure than the one before. Um, I'm not naturally a flower uh, painter, and, and, uh, but, but I have painted flowers and I'm really looking forward to the uh, challenge of this one. Uh, I think I mentioned this once before, that uh, Picasso is once reputed to have said that uh, yeah, if you know how something is going to turn out, there's no point in doing it. So I had no idea how this is going to turn out. Uh, and therefore, I think there's every point in going ahead and doing it. Um, in addition, I, I have had a couple of people ask if I would do some still life and flower painting. So this is the departure from what we have done a lot of up until now. And uh, I, I think it's an exciting departure and I'm looking forward to it. That is just great. Um, interestingly, where I live in Dorset, Dorchester, and it's specifically in a place called Poundbury, there is a friend of mine who is um, quite a, a significant botanical artist. She is at the moment working on uh, six botanical paintings uh, to go into Chelsea RHS next year, should, should, should that happen. Um, I haven't told her that I'm painting flowers and I think she'd be horrified if she found out that I was. So um, that all brings me on to Edward Wesson, who I mentioned last time we met and Lois has put out information on his paintings. Now, I, I'm a great fan of, of uh, as indeed I think are a lot of artists now. He, he, he died uh, 40 or 50 years ago, Edward Wesson, a, a, a British painter, watercolorist. Um, I, and I'm a great fan of his and I, I think a lot of artists uh, in one way or another have used him as an inspiration or copied his work. I'm going to do exactly that, but not with his normal paintings, but with his flower paintings. And I did put out a couple of pictures and suggested you might like to even Google this man. Uh, his flower paintings, which seem to me wonderfully loose, very spontaneous, and I think very appropriate for uh, anyone who wishes to paint and particularly with watercolors wants to loosen up a little bit. So I think this will be a great exercise for me and for you in a, a loose a watercolor painting and we will unashamedly uh, borrow, beg, steal whatever we can from Edward Weston. Thank him very much in advance. Thank you, Edward. I'll be coming back to him um, in a little bit. Now, up until now, and I think I was thinking about it earlier, I think every single demonstration I've done, we have uh, broken or split the painting up into four sections. Uh, they, they are uh, a drawing and thinking about the composition, putting that uh, as one. The second one would be washes. Uh, light washes. The third would be putting darker colors on, uh, including shadows. And then the last would be finishing off with various details just to bring the thing to a, a close. I've looked uh, quite closely at how I think that Edward Wesson might have painted these flowers. And I don't know if anybody else has done that. And I can't break it into four sections, four stages. I can break it into three. And so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, uh, we're, get, we're going to have a departure again, but in, in terms of breaking the painting into the stages. So I see it as being uh, a, a drawing stage, a, uh, a, a second stage, which will probably be the longest one, which will be putting all the colors down. Um, 
and uh, and then a third stage, like all the others, where we just sit back and look at some details just to bring the painting to a close. Now, I, I think just before I get going, uh, I think this painting should be um, the quickest one that I, we have, will have done to date. And um, I know that quite often, I, th I think that most of, a lot of people like to paint along as I paint. So I get started and they get going and we give a bit of time at the end to to um, for everyone to catch up and, and that sort of thing. It might be in this one, the very nature of trying to copy a good lesson. It might be that in the second stage, and I'll mention it again when we get there, you might let me go a bit further uh, than you have done up until now, uh, just to see what I'm doing uh, before you begin your painting. We'll, we'll, we'll allow more time afterwards for people to, to catch up. Whatever you feel comfortable with, but I think that's something uh, that we might do. Right, so let's move on now to the subject matter here. Uh, I find, and I, I reckon, I wouldn't be at all surprised if Edward Wesson did this. I find it really useful just to mark out the light uh, flowers. And in fact, in flower arranging and painting flowers, I always, what little I've done, I always found it useful to have, uh, if possible, a light or white flower uh, 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 somewhere in the composition because it gives you some wonderful values light and dark, which emphasize the flowers. And you can see Wesson has done this. He, he must have thought about these values of light and dark in all of his paintings here, how he's made the rose, roses stand out because of what's dark behind them. So my drawing is going to uh, feature where these flowers are and not a lot else apart from the pot. So if I do something like, um, I'm going off to one side, uh, it, it's some sort of a vessel that it's on here, like that, it's going to be, uh, and, and then I, I'm going to mark up with some pencil marks where, I want the light flowers to be. And in fact, here, here, this is me being really stupid. I'm gonna put a W there, just to remind me, leave them alone. That's white, that's gonna be the white of the paper uh, there. Uh, this, uh, and, and then I, I've got some other, some red flowers which are going out here. I'm not going to draw anything more than that. Oh yeah, what I might do is, Get, get some sort of idea where I'm going to put the base that is on. Maybe something like, I may change this there. I'm going to go for the curved base and it's going to be, say, something like, something like that. Um, and this, this will be glass. And that's as much drawing as I'm going to do. I'm, I'm not going to draw in the leaves uh, the stems, uh, let's put a, I, I'll just put a couple of, these are the red flowers here. And there are flowers, petals scattered on the table here. Uh, I, I won't bother with those just at the moment. That's the extent of, and taper that there. That's the extent of my drawing. And so everybody, uh, over to you to think about how you're going to compose this picture, which way around you're going to have your paper, how large or small you're going to have it on whichever way around you have your paper. Um, the way I'll paint, I, I, I'm going to suggest you don't get locked into drawing all the leaves and everything, and maybe, uh, maybe mark up the areas that you want to keep 
white, which we can bring in as light roses or red roses later on. I'm mixing, first of all, uh, with lemon yellow and a little bit of ultramarine blue. A quite a light green, but I want it to um, go a little more olive than that. So I'll bring in some raw sienna or yellow ochre on here. Um, and I've got a, a light green east with a little bit of olive tinge to it here. Let's just see. Let's just see how that goes. And this is going to be some of my lighter leaves. So I'm keeping this area of um, this extra area of paper here um, larger than the other side so that I can spread the composition out a bit here. This brush sort of naturally goes to a leaf-like shape, although I'm not, not entirely convinced any of these do look particularly leaf-like, but what they do, yes, they, they're going that way. They're going this. I've just put some. So I'm, I'm working some of these uh, leaves around here uh, and working around where I had drawn, uh, the, particularly the white areas. Um, for, for uh, the roses, but there we are. let's just put uh, mix a bit more of that and make that a bit darker. Lemon yellow, uh, raw sienna or yellow ochre, and a bit of ultramarine blue. Let's just see if I make that much darker green and I leaving gaps where the, I want little, little bits of uh, the, the, the pinky ready roses to um, come in. I've got quite a lot of red here that I want to bring in. Let's bring in a couple of leaves here. And where this paint touches the, the lighter colors, then it will start to merge in. Um, the more I do this, the more I really think that it, this is so much like flower arranging. Um, let's put a more green, more of that darker green. I'm going to make that green a bit darker now. Let's go back to my lemon yellow a bit more. Um, a bit more ultramarine blue. So <clears throat> this Generally speaking, a lot of the leaves here are going to be a bit darker. So let's let's just do that now. And I've made that darker and I'm going to add a bit of burnt sienna and a little bit of red here and just put in some one or two darker bits under here. Where the leaves go into the pot, I'll, I'll just go back and get a lighter color there, I think. Let's um, put something going on here. I'm switching to my smaller squirrel hair mop brush. And I'm going to bring in some quite stronger dark colors now. 
that is ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. So let's just go around, as I reckon Wesson would have done, let's go around some of the, the areas where I want to emphasize the lights. I think in a moment I need to put some red in to see what I'm doing here. Um, Right, there's two or three different greens in there. I've started bringing in some darker areas where I want things to be darker. It's interesting that when you're painting flowers, particularly in vases, that quite air, often this area, just where the flowers come to the neck of whatever the vase is, that you always get a little bit of darkness there. If you look at Edward Wessons, he's great at sort of popping a bit of darkness in just at that point. We, we can maybe deal with that later if we have to. So I'm picking up some um, red here. Uh, this is crimson and this mixed a little bit of the Windsor red there. Let's just put something light in here. Just introduce some red, bit of red there. Um, yeah. What about something there? And um, so this is a, a light uh, red. I'm just popping a few marks here of fallen fallen leaves. Get rid of the W's I put in here. And for the roses at this point, um, let's uh, just put a bit of water in just to wet the paper a little bit and put in some very uh, pick up a little bit of this red, maybe. I might even add a bit of yellow to it. See what that does. Or oh, a bit of crimson. I, I just want to um, get uh, just almost try and create a peachiness about the colour. No, it's still a bit too wet. Dry that off. It, it'll paper will still be wet, but it'll take some of the because of a watercolour, it's always about how much paper a uh, paint is on your paper, on your brush. Uh, it's just I'm looking at the water pot here. I'd quite like to have a few um, uh, glint, uh, have it glinting a little bit, just to suggest that it is glass. Bring in some dark here. Right. Now, um, where do I go from here? 
uh, I need to have some of these big uh, value changes, but um, I was talking about that Edward Wesson had, but I'm just wondering whether I might leave it at this point now and um, come back to it. And, and in fact, I'm almost going back to doing four stages because I treated that as a bit of a wash in a sense. And, and, and I'm going to let that dry and come back to it with some darker colors and deal with what, how we're gonna handle the, um, the, the background and, and the, the, the foreground and the shadows here. So I'm, I'm coming in with some dark colors here and let's, um, uh, let, let's, let's have a look at these uh, red flowers. These, these red ones here and see if I can bring in some crimson here and um, where's my photograph? You see, it's very difficult to control quite what's happening here. That's, um, let's see how that goes with that. And uh, let's take a look at these roses now. Um, uh, I'm gonna go back to that color, add a bit of, so I've mixed a little bit of the two reds together and then a little bit of yellow. Let's just see what we get out of that. Uh, so there, there should be some water there should be some water on those roses. I, I think I want a little bit more. Let's just see. It seems to me that painting roses, that the, the less you do, the better it is really. Right, that's the roses. Um, I think I'll put a shadow in here and uh, see what how that changes the painting. with quite a blue colour. Uh, I'll go for the French ultramarine that I've got here. And uh, a bit of burnt sienna. And uh, This is going to go up to the edge of the a little bit more brown in there to the shadow. Let's show I, all these little holes on the um, on the table. I'm not going to worry about those. That's too difficult. And I'll use some of that just um, underneath some of these fallen petals here. 
Okay, can I use that? Let's just take some of that color into here and We'll come back to all of that a little later on. Let's just put some shadow in there. I'm going to start bringing shadow into some of these things and in so some areas I'll make them much darker. So I'm going back to my French ultramarine blue, putting a bit of burnt sienna here and um, let's just work some shadows in here. If you look at Edward Weston's paintings, he's really got some very good strong darks in there. So let's, uh, let's not be frightened to, to do some of that. Uh, I'm going to and in fact what I'll do is I'll just off to one side I'll make a much stronger darker color and I'm going to use this color up here which is um, neutral tint which is a sort of dark color and let's just see if I can drop that in some places. Now various bits of my painting are uh, got lots of water on that's fine so let's just see if we can make use in some areas of where I want it to be dark and to it's it's about these values uh, just getting the um, them working with each other I want to bring some darker green in here so I'll go back to go back to those greens that I mixed up at the start lemon yellow French ultramarine um, and I'll put a little bit of burnt sienna in there so that that gives me quite a dark green it's not it's not so much a shadow green I just want some of these leaves to you probably get probably see from what's happening with my brush how difficult it is to get something controlled but I'm, I'm quite quite happy with uh, these marks um, there's a lot of darkness down here so let's not let's do something about that and maybe Right, I'm nearly there. I just want to, I want to quite work out what I'm going to do with this area. Um, let's put some leaf shapes in there. Now, when you've got wet pa paper on your paper, and um, that, that's often a good time to add some uh, other colors to it. But if you're going to bring another color into it, just make sure 
that it's a very strong color. If you add water to that, and th this is swimming in water here at the moment, uh, if you add water to that, uh, then you're going to get all these blooms and things that everyone seems to dislike. Let's just... Um... So, I'm... I'm making a sort of light... Let me show you here. I'm making, just off here, a light shadowy colour and I want to I want to bring some of that onto, I started off by saying the light's coming this way and this cast shadow is, is here. So um, let's, let's just see if I can. Remember this was a much lighter shadow color. I've just added water to it. Let's just put a little bit. There, let's take a bit of uh, Using these brushes at the edge of the brush or um, in an unconventional, so, so to speak, way is um, you can get all sorts of interesting marks that you might not otherwise have achieved. Um, Right, I think that's maybe enough there for the moment. So I'm, I'm going to, I, I drew a line here, which was suggesting the, that table, which is a sort of curved table. This, I just go over that line so you can see, I drew that there and I, I took my shadow, uh, cast shadow up to that line. I'm, I'm not quite sure what's happening here with the painting. I'll probably chop it off there or something because I haven't quite worked that bit of the conversation. But, but what I want to do is bring in some sort of background. Now, if you look at Western paintings, it's very interesting, of course. I mean, this is a well-known technique, but if you want to make something appear lighter, then you enhance that by putting something darker around it. So this this bit of rose here, which he's just left white paper, uh, he's put something relatively dark around it. Similarly, he's made these, this leaf and these roses here, appear darker by putting a lighter background here. So, so I'm not thinking in terms of what the background is. I'm just thinking in terms of what can I put there that's going to make uh, what I've already got on my painting work a little better. Remember I, I said that quite often the painting is about responding to what you put in. You, you, can, you can see here how he, in order to make that appear a bit darker, this area at the back here is, is quite often quite light. And similarly, you're, you're picking up uh, lighter areas here by putting darker things around it. Okay. Um, the other thing is, I, I always feel it's quite useful to think about is um, the temperature of um, the painting. Now flowers and greenery and leaves quite often are quite warm colored. Um, and if you want to emphasize that warmth, then maybe you could think about putting something a bit cooler in the background. Um, cooler normally means something with blue. So let's, I, I said we were going to be pinching from Wesson as much as possible in this lesson. Let's look at what he has done here. He has, um, he, he's gone for some fairly cool uh, 
colours. No, he's done exactly the opposite here, but he's done, done for sort of cool colours to make uh, the warms come out in the leaves. He's very much sort of brought something um, a little cooler there. So uh, I, I, I'm going to do that and uh, the light's coming from this side. I want to try and emphasize some of the leaves that are darker here. So I think I'll, I, I'll make this lighter generally and I'll make this generally a little bit darker coming down on to this area here. So let's, um, let's see what I can do with that. Yeah. When we talk about w cool and warm colors, we're, we're nearly always referring to things that either have blue or red in them. Um, and And get rid of that green from my water. So let's um, let's start off with uh, say something like this cerulean blue. That's a cool blue. Here we are. It's a bit too stark. Um, uh, so I want to tone it down and grade down a bit. And I'll put a little bit of, um, I'll put a little bit of burnt sienna, something with a bit of red into it here. Yeah, so I, I'll play around with this cerulean blue. adding the red to it, just graze it down a little bit. And uh, um, and I said, I'm going to make this a little bit darker here than, than on the other side. So let's, let's just do that. If you look how Western paints is. Um, and bring some of that light color over here. Okay, I want to make this a bit darker, so I'll pick up some stronger paint and a bit of ultramarine blue, maybe a bit more of that. Can you just recap what colours you've got in that then, now, Mike? Uh, I, I've been using cerulean blue um, with. Um, Let's just see what happens here. Cerulean blue and a little bit of burnt sienna. It just it, it gives me a sort of grey. Yeah. Right. Let's just see how that will always dry lighter anyway. Let's just see what that does um, in terms of colours. And then down here, now this is. Um, I'm just going to dry that little bit with my hair dryer. Can you just tell me, please, what colours you use to the shadow? Because someone who was a bit left behind wants to know what Okay, the right. Is. Okay, let's go back. I, I played around with the shadow with a bit of French ultramarine blue and a touch of burnt sienna. Okay? Um, uh, the, the French ultramarine blue is, is a warm blue um, uh, and uh, it, it's... With, with a little bit of burnt sienna, it grays it down a little bit. Um, and if you put too much of this burnt sienna in, it becomes brown. And I wanted there to be a blueness about it. And if you put uh, too little, it becomes sort of much too blue. And, and, and some sort of combination of that is, is what I use, but for the shadows, for this sort of thing going on in here. In, in some places I added more uh, French ultramarine blue and a, a stronger mix of colours to get a stronger mix. And in one or two places, I've even added some burnt 
uh, some uh, neutral tint, which is uh, Payne's grey is another similar colour, which, which, which will make things even darker as I've, as I've got here. Um, yes. Um, and then for this area here, I, I, I wanted to go for a cooler colour, so I went for a cooler blue, which was cerulean blue, and I added a, a little bit of burnt sienna into gr a grey down here. So what, what I'm going to do, just going to give this a dry, and then I, I, I want to change this. Uh, it's too white, and then see whether I need to add any final detail. So let, let me just dry this whilst you're painting. Right. I want to put something on here. Um, and I don't necessarily have to follow the photograph, which uh, uh, and I, I would quite like to put something which has got a little bit of brown in it. So let's um, let's go for uh, some burnt umber here. Burnt umber. It's a little bit too dark. Get rid of that. So I was thinking of putting some sort of burnt umber and uh, raw sienna or yellow ochre. So let's put that that lighter colour down first. This is raw sienna. Could be yellow ochre, and I'm just going to add a touch of burnt umber just to. Now, is that too warm? I wonder. So I wanted some sort of brown on there and um, I've taken some of it off there just to help and make these appear a little bit, shadows a little bit darker. I'm going to use the rigger brush for this and, uh, and I think uh, I'll just um, bring in some really dark colours here. So uh, I'm going to my French ultramarine blue and my and the burnt sienna that's made a really dark sludgy color there but i'm going to make it even darker by putting some neutral tint in so neutral tint uh, is a very similar color to Payne's gray which a lot of people use Payne's gray is a more opaque color and this is a little more translucent and you, so i've got a really um really dark color there and uh, see if I can do as, as little as possible here. So what do I want to do? Uh, gonna have a look at Siego and see what he might have done. I really want, don't want to do very much. He probably would have done this earlier in the painting anyway. Yeah, I'm sure he would have done. Um, so, uh, something there. Um, you often get little sort of twigs and stalks and flowering flowers. I don't think I've got many in this one, but I'm going to put a few in. Um, Maybe
I'm just thinking really what might add just a tiny little, I, I think maybe that's enough. I don't think I need to do any more. Let's 